you today about the new beginnings. As I've just said, you're on the threshold of the new year, and you're crossing over from 2018 to 2019. And for some of us, it hasn't been like a great year. You know, we've had some serious challenges and obstacles in our way. And for some of us, we might be glad to you over. For some of us, we're excited to enter into the new year, 2019, although we still have some baggage and problems and unresolved issues that we still find carry from this year into the next year. But I think for all of us generally, we're all pretty excited and have a sense of adventure in us because we're entering into something new. New challenges, new paths, new hopes, and new beginnings. We were much like the people of Israel back in the day. There was a time when they were crossing over the Jordan River from the wilderness into the promised land. And just like us for them, it was a sense of we gave them something new. There's something new here. It's a, it's a new path, a new challenge, a new adventures awaiting us. And I'm sure for some of them, they were just glad to be out of the wilderness, out of the desert. Some of us, some of them, although they were entering into the promised land, they still had baggage and problems that we were trying to deal with. That they try to resolve even before they get into the promised land. But like many of them, just like us, they were entering into something new. The Bible says they have not been that way before. Just like us, we're entering into 2019 and we have not been that way before. This is going to be something new. It's going to be a year full of promise, adventure, joy and excitement, new hopes, new resolutions, and new beginnings. If you have the Bible, let's turn to that passage in Scripture as we read. The crossing over of the Jordan River. Yeah, put it on, then let's see where it is. Joshua chapter 3. Early in the morning, Joshua and all the Israelites set out from Shechem and went to Jordan, where they camped before crossing over. After three days, the officers went throughout the camp, giving orders to the people. When you see the Ark of the Covenant of the Lord your God and the priests who are Levites carrying it, you are to move out from your positions and follow it. Then you will know which way to go, since you have never been this way before. Thank you. To get a bit of a background to this story that we're going to go 40 years before this, what happens is Moses leads the people of Israel out of bondage in Egypt. They've been here for 430 years and it's time to be liberated. So he frees the people of Israel and they, they cross the Red Sea at that time and they go down to Mount Sinai and they stay there for about nine months where God gives, given, uh, where God gives Moses all the commandments, all the Levitical laws, all the laws of the tabernacle and how to build it. So he gets a whole lot of laws while he stays there for about nine months. Then it's a big moment, they're going to head into the promised land. So what Moses does, he takes all the people, and they head up to a place called Kadesh Barania, Kadesh. And they're from the southern part of Israel. So they, they, they camp there for a while because they know that now they're going to cross over into the promised land. Yay! It's a big victory for them. But before then, he sends out scouts. He sends out 12 people, one from each of the tribes of Israel. He sends them into the promised land for 40 days. That's important, for 40 days. And he sends them in to scout the land. Check out the reason who gets back to the board. So they go out for 40 days, off for 40 days they come back. Joshua and Caleb, that's one of the two, they step forward and say, man, this thing is awesome, man, it's a beautiful day, it's big great for this side. We've got to take it. We've got to take this, man, now let's conquer it. But the other 10 people, they step forward and they say, no, no, wait a minute, guys, there's giants in this land, and there's no way we're going to take it. We've got grasshoppers in this side. These guys are huge. We're never going to take it. And because of this fear, it spreads through the whole of the people of Israel. And because of that fear and faithlessness, when I come in the land with God's power at his disposal, God punishes them. To wander the desert for how many years? Forty. One year for every day they spent in the promised land. That's where the forty years comes from. It wasn't just arbitrary number. It was playing out there. God said, because you spent every day of those forty days in the promised land, I'm going to let you wander the desert now for forty years. One year for you doing that one day. And that's what they do, so they wander the desert, basically aimlessly, if you look at the map, the area where they, where they travel was the Mount Sinai area, it's not a big territory at all, it's actually very, very small. And all they've done for 40 years is don't so. It's all they've done. So after 40 years elapsed, they find me back on the borderland of Canaan. This time Moses is dead and buried, and Joshua takes over the leadership of Israel. 
So he's standing proud and saying, hey guys, this is it. The 40 years of punishment is over. We're going to now take the promised land. Let's do it. But he doesn't go upset. I'm most of them. He starts something different, a different take. He goes around and he wants to cross over the Jordan River to the east. So he gets all the guys that they can at the Jordan River. They're ready to cross over. But the Bible says specifically it was harvest time. It was springtime. Which meant that all the snow mountains would now melt down and come into the Jordan River versus banks. Usually the Jordan River was about 100 feet where they crossed. It wasn't that big. They could have crossed it on a good day. But this was a harvest time. It was a springtime. That meant now the Jordan River was a mile wide. 50 times greater than normal. There's no way they were going to cross it. So they got to this place and they thought, what are we going to do now? Here we are, Joshua, we're ready. There's the promise I can see it. I can throw a stone over. But how are we going to get there? How are we going to cross over this Jordan River? This huge obstacle. Before they entered into the promised land of victory, they had to cross one more final river, the Jordan River. Many of us have the Jordan River in our lives. As we cross the threshold of 2018 to 2019, there's some of us also just the visible challenges and obstacles in our way. We all have Jordans in our lives. In this message that we're going to read about Joshua, God tells us how we will overcome those obstacles, those challenges, before we even head in to 2019. So as they came out there, they understand there's no way that they got the boats there, they got the materials and resources to build the bridge, they got nothing. So they're sitting up, sitting ducks. Joshua, what are we going to do? Waiting for God to say something. God does. God tells him this. He says, okay, this is the first instruction, guys. Before you cross over, before you go to the promised land, this is the first thing I want you to do. When you see the ark of the covenant move, everybody, can you see the ark? When you see the ark of the covenant move, follow it. That was his instructions. And everybody knows that the Ark of the Covenant represented the presence of God. This was made by Moses and put in the Holy of Holies in the tabernacle and laid in the temple. This is where God will reside with his people. He will come down from the glories of heaven and this is where he will be. We will talk to the people of Israel, to the high priest. So this represented the presence of God. So God's instruction was simple. When you see that thing, I want you to follow it. So I've got my two Levite priests here. There we go. Can I carry this off for us and show us what God meant by this? Uh, you can go faster there, little Levi. <laughs> My little red Levi, the looks like a red bumblebee. Uh, uh, so this is it. The, the priest will be carrying the ark and God says, where it goes, I want you to follow. So walk, just walk that way. Just go in there. All right, there we go. So as it starts, all the people of Israel pack up their stuff and they'll start following them. They don't know where it's back. They're just following the ark. They're just following God. You see that? So if this is going to the Jordan River, they going to the Jordan River, if it's going over the mountain, they going over the mountain. That's the way it was. God's instructions for you and me, you can carry on, you can put it like that, it is. God's instructions for me and you, crossing over into the year 2019, is where I go follow me. Many of us have our own resolutions, our own goals, our own visions, and there's nothing wrong with that. I encourage that. I encourage us to have goals and visions and resolutions. But God wants to understand, are your goals and visions aligned with His? It's not you stand for your own. Ambitions and selfish desires, there's not only to God in His Word. God says, Listen, God, before you even think about going there, I want you to follow me and me only. So that's the first thing God says, Follow me. So where the ark goes, they start following. And it's interesting that the first place God led them was to the Jordan River, to the obstacle, to the problem. I thought that's weird, you know, God would have done so many other things. He could have went down south and said, Listen, God, we're not even going to go across the river. We're just going to go down south and we're going to go around this side. Or we're going to go north. Then he got around and said, Galilee, come down to the Damascus. But he didn't. God, there's no shortcuts with God. There was an obstacle they had to face and had to get through. And so many of us like to run from our problems, don't we? We see the problem and immediately we turn our back and we want to run. We want to get as far away from this problem as possible. And God led them right to the obstacle, right to the foot of it. And he said, listen guys, there's an obstacle. Don't run from it. Because with me in your life, I'm not going to get you to it, but I'm going to get you through it. And that's what God's message for you to do. There's so many times we run from our problems. Even before we face 2019, we're still burdened with these problems. God says to you today, follow me. And not only will I take you through the problem, but I'll resolve it for you and I'll get you through that problem. And that's where the faith gets you. So Joshua is there, they're all playing there, they're all parked at the Jordan River, they can't get it. The ark's there, they say, okay, God, here we are. We're here. How do we get over it? This was God's plan. He says, okay, this is what I want you to do, guys. Listen carefully, Joshua. We're the priests. They must take the ark. And, and as they walk towards the river, when their feet, when their feet touch the river, 
He go on. Isn't that a crazy idea? I'm sure Joshua was with God for like the last 40 years and he's seen great miracles and great power display, but this must have been like a crazy idea. He must have even been thinking, this old man is crazy. Stinking feet of a Levite and part of the river, that's crazy. Who's ever heard of such a stinking idea before? And God just said something simple. Listen, if you want to see the problem go away, you want to see the river part, you want to get the promised land, I want their feet to touch the river. That's it. That was God's condition. I will do the miracle. But if you go to take a step of faith, that's what it's all about. And God's asking us to do the same thing. So many times we live in a very fast food kind of place. We've got problems and just want God to solve it. Think of three days and the genie pops out. No, God said, listen, can you give me something? Can you take a step of faith and trust in me, believe in me, that this will come to pass? Those people are still say, no way, that's crazy. I'm not going to put my feet in the water. If they were anything like me, I don't like water. I don't get near rivers, near pools, near anything. I'm not even a shower on every day. <laughs> you know, I don't like water. And these guys could have said, listen, that's crazy. I'm going to put my feet in the water. That river that is cold. It's not going to do anything. But God said, listen, guys, do you have trust in me? Do you have trust, trust and faith in my ability that I will do this for you? All I'm asking for you to trust me. Have a step of faith. God's asking you to take a step of faith to you. Take a step of faith towards your problem. Knowing that God, God is the one, He's the source and the power that's going to resolve that problem for you. Many of us try to backstep and we try to run away and we say, God, this isn't going to happen. How's my feet going to part this river? And God said, It's not about your feet, it's about my power. And this is what they do. So my Levites, you're going to come back, bumblebee. <laughs> and, and, and just to like try and do this even more visual, I'm actually going to draw the river right here. Cha ching! Can you see my Jordan River? I don't know where this comes from. Where does this come from? Actually, come on. AJT. Auction here. That's where it comes from. Okay, so you all see my river. So I've got a river here. This is the Jordan River. And it's very simple because I don't only want this to be a, a spiritual application. I want you to see this and really see it happen. I want you to see down into your spirit and say, that's it. That's what I must do. That's how I'm going to overcome this obstacle in my life. That's how I'm going to cross my Jordan. That's how I'm going to get into the new year. Amen. All right, some of you are with me, some of you are still trying to consider what I'm going to do here. All right, so you have got a nice Jordan River. All right, there we go. And now I need help from maybe yourself and if you said, you know what? This is going to be a cool experiment if you've seen one before. All right, maybe you need to stand this side. And then what I want you to ask to do, you can stand this side. So now I just want you, when they come and touch this, I just want you to do it like that. That's all I want you to do. Very simple. Very good. It's like a magic trick. I feel so excited. You're like, they come to you. All right, Levi, take your shoes off because they're all very important. They don't have soft in those days. All right, so they have to be feet. All right, so carry the off there. All right, carry the off. Then we get a big moment. So God says, all right, when their feet touch, it's going to pour. These guys have their faith. They could have said, no, you crazy old man, I'm not going to do that. But they said, no, God, I believe you. I know that you'll pop there just by my stinking feet touching it. So walk around the table. The people of Israel followed behind. They were thinking, no, I'm not going to follow these priests because they know what they're doing. God gave them the instruction. And I'll well, see you later. <laughs> <laughs> What's your number? <laughs> All right, so they start going, and she said, a big moment. Can you feel the tension in here? You can, can't, can't you? That they're walking slowly, but they know what's going to happen. Is it going to work? And, and as the feet touch the river, look what happens. Can you see it? They, the river parts. Do you see that? Isn't that cool? They didn't you know what you did, but you didn't see it at <laughs> Thanks, guys. Thank you, sir. You can, you, you, you can stop folding up my daughter right now. <laughs> Right? <laughs> we'll get about the part in the river, you have to fill it up also. And the river parted. Parted 20 miles. 20 miles is a long way. A part all around from here, all the way out to the city of Adam. Adam. 20 miles. Thank you guys, my good priest. Give him a hand. They parted. And, and they crossed over into a new world, into the promised land. And all it took was a step of faith. And that's my question I want to ask you today. What made the miracle happen? Was it the feet of the priest or the hand of God? The hand of God. The feet had nothing to do with it. It was just, my son is stinky little feet. They had nothing to do with it. His feet could have never made this happen. No matter how holy and righteous these priests were, their feet had 
nothing to do with the moon. It's not about their feet, it's about their faith. And that's what God wanted. God said, listen, I'm going to make a miracle happen. I just want to see your faith. God's asking you that today. I want to see your faith. It's not about what you have. There's many of us look at our problems and we say, wow, look how big this problem is and look how small my resources are. Look at my limitations. Look at my, my, my financials and look at my health. And we look at all our things and we see how small they are. Look how small my feet are, God. They, they can't cross the tool. No, that's not going to happen. That's our attitude. God, look how small the things that I have. How can this solve this big problem in my life? You know what's wrong with that? A perspective. I think it should be, God, this is how small my problem is. This is a great cure. You see that? But so often we miss that. We say, look how small our resources are. God, I can't overcome this big problem. We should be saying, this little problem is nothing, God, because you are so great. Our God is greater. Our God is stronger. He's the same that song. Do you believe that? It's all about attitude, it's all about motivation, it's all about the perspective of how you see that problem. For these priests, all they had to do was walk. It wasn't about their feet. It was about their faith. And when their faith kicked in, the world departed. God's message to you is the same. Stop looking at your problems and your limitations because it's not about you. In our own strength, in our own abilities, we will never conquer anything. Who believes that? Anything in our life that happens, miracles, is supernatural. It's from God. It will always be about God. It's never going to be about you, but so often that's what we do. We look at our stuff and we come to the Jordan of rivers of our life and we say, how can I? And that's our problem. How can I do that, God? And God said, well, it's not about you anyway. How can you do what? It's not about you. So step back, remember the reins and say, God, I can't do anything anyway. But I know that you can. And that's faith. Right. And that's what we are here to do. And we can't, it's difficult for us as human beings to do that. To cross over, to give all that control over to God and say, God, not only do I love you and worship you, but I trust you with everything. And it's not about what I have or what I don't have. I can't do it anyway, but you can. One of my favorite verses in the Bible, my, my wife says, I say this every week, because every time I have a different verse up there. But it's true. Right? There's so many beautiful verses in the Bible. You know how many verses in the Bible? Anybody will take a pot of guess for 50 bucks. 30,000 verses. Right? It's 66 books for 30,000 verses. And I can find 10 good ones in my Genesis chapter 1. Right? But this is one of my power verses, Ephesians 3.20. Uh, there's my friend David. What are you doing wrong? You know this one. Have you got Ephesians 3? Uh, uh, Ephesians 2.20. 2.20. Almost. Yeah. Yeah. This is my power verse. It's just an amazing verse. Let me read it to you. Now unto him. Everyone say to him. Yeah. God. Now unto him. God. Who is able to do immeasurably more than all you can ask for imagine according to his power? Everybody say his power. It's to him, it's to his power, it's not about you. So why are you trying to cross your own Jordans and it's not you can't even do it anyway? It's all about God and his power. That is a work within us. God has given us his Holy Spirit inside of us. And we conquer our Jordans, we conquer our challenges because he is inside of us. And it's never ever going to be about you. The first thing you understand before you even think of Daniel 2019. Is relinquish control to God. Follow Him. Follow Him in faith. And say, God, no matter what I see my face in right now today, or the challenges that I will face, even in the first week of the new year, I know that it's going to be by your power, your grace, your strength, that I'm going to overcome these things. It's never been about anything that can get It's always been about God and His great power. So the Israelites understood that now. They've crossed over, and they've crossed now finally over to to turn the promised land. And they have to understand one thing is that the things they've done in the wilderness is not the same things they're doing in the promised land. Things have to change. Their lifestyle has to change. What they eat has to change. The way they think about life and conquering people, they didn't have any wars in the desert, but now they have to conquer giants. Their whole thinking, their whole mindset has to change as they cross over into the promised land. And so, when you cross over to 2019, your mindset has to change too. There's some things in our life that we have to change. Are you ready for that? Yeah, some lifestyle changes in this. Maybe some habits that we've carried over from 2018. This year we've been struggling with some habits. 2019 is a time of change. It's a time to get rid of those things. Maybe some of you know as healthy as you should be and you're still eating right. So all you girls are picking up weight in the last month or two. No more chocolates. Uh, Daisy's laughing, so that's one for you. No more chocolates, no more cases. We're starting eating 
They're still in the diet. You know, those kind of things. Fiji. So uh, maybe our last of the change is eating this new thing. And you've got to start on the premise that you've got to do things differently. You've got to do new things. And even one point is a spiritual life. Because maybe you, you've been thinking, wow, this is great. You come to say, Mark, I'm really growing to the Christian and God bless you, you have. And I'm not going to be here now. But you know what? I want 2019 to be a year where you go, oh yeah. I don't want you just to be a Christian. I want you to be a Christian Christian. Right. I want you to go deeper with God. So you attend church for you to begin the Bible study to get into the Word of God. This is it. And 66 beautiful books. And most Christians don't know anything about it. If you want to know God and find your life, this is it. There's only one book He's given us. So you better start getting into it. Pray more. Get aggressive about your Christian life, about your Christian walk with God. You know, read this book. I've read something, or I saw something on YouTube recently that just actually really changed the way I look at reading and in the Bible. It was actually ended at the beginning of one of the, the, the clips. And this guy said that uh, you're, you're talking about leaders reading. And he said this based on um, the average number of words in a, a book, a general book, and based on the number of words that we read per minute, we can read. If we spend 45 minutes a day, we can read a book a week. Any book. Can you imagine? So if you spend a dedicated 45 minutes a day reading something, and I'm talking about good self-help books here, how uh, leadership books or uh, motivation or inspiration, whatever you want, not Stephen King and Wills and Boons. I'm talking about good books that can be shared for you. And if you spend 45 minutes, you can read a book a week. Isn't that amazing? And I'm thinking, well, imagine if you let the right. You can read this thing over and over in during the year. And some people haven't read this. I know some of us have a plan that we're going to read the Bible, like in this year, we're going to finish it. Some of you have, well, this is well done. But if you apply that to your life and actually get aggressive about this Word of God, you can read it over and over. Imagine reading this thing like three or four times a year. Man, awesome. I've actually tried to do that already. I started my Matthew, and I just wanted to read and read. Like, read as if I was getting really, really passionate and enthusiastic about this book. And it's really out. You know, you don't read one verse, one passage, one chapter. I just read like 10 chapters at a time. And it's wow, awesome. Imagine how far I'll be in a couple of months' time. I'll be finished the New Testament. That's what I want you to do. I want you to step up. I want you to see 2019 as a new place, new beginnings, new adventures. And I know that for the youth. Like, you know, my son, he, he's matriculated now, so he's got a whole lot of art in front of him. He's thinking, I'm going to get a driver's license. I'm going to go study. I'm going to get a job. Hopefully, get a girlfriend. If not, I'll have to order one from Russia. <laughs> but, you know, he's. He's got all this adventure, he's got the whole world, he's always he's singing now, there's so much things to do, right? You guys do, they'd be you. Uh, and you're thinking of getting to new grades, my other son's getting to a new grade, he's like, oh, a new classroom, a new teacher, maybe new kids in the class, new learning abilities. Wow, awesome. But for anybody with a bit of grey hair like me, we've done all that, man. man. We've done, be, 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 you've got your virus license. Man, who cares? It's the same old, same old, man. 2019 is not going to be any different from 2019. Because we've been here, done that, same old, same old, that's a problem. We get into this repetition of sameness, and dullness, and apathy, and complacency. You know, don't feel like that? I feel like that. Uh, because we, there's nothing else to do, there's no more suffering, man. We go to the same job, spend 10 hours there in the same stuff. Then we go home and sit the same sofa, watch the same city sports. Man, yeah, man. The same wife? The same wife? Ah! <laughs> but I got to know that now. Same wife and she loved you before my heart. <laughs> you know, you do the same stuff. And, 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 and some of us aren't looking forward to 2019 because it's just the same old life. Let me tell you, I want to change that today. I want you to walk out there and tell that there will never be other 2019 than before. Verse 4 in that verse that we read. God said, Go this way because you've never been this way before. And that's so exciting to me. You know, I don't care how you are, how much wisdom you have, experience, and knowledge. You have never been to 2019. No one has. And that's exciting for me. And, I, and I'm arguing the same repetitive mode and doing the same stuff, but it doesn't have to be that way. We can change it. We can do things new. I want you to get excited about 2019. As if it was the last year on this planet. What would you do if you had one more year left before you dead, you die, you're out of here? Imagine all the things that we still want to do. And you can do that. Maybe it means you're going to take up some day and you're thinking, okay, because I really want to draw and paint. This is your year to do that. Take your part. And the first thing you're going to do is get some pencils, and then you're going to phone me because I can draw. And then you say, Randy, you can teach me how to do this because I want to learn something new this year. Maybe you want to play an 
instrument, the piano, or guitar, and you want to learn an instrument, and then you phone me, you say, Raymond, can you teach me to do this? Because I want Kitty Hunt to be your difference. I want it to be something different from all the years before. I don't want the same dullness as repetitiveness. And you know, for Christians, we can't have a dull day. If you're a Christian, and the creator of the universe has planted himself inside of you, it's almost impossible for you to have a bad day. But we do. Because we don't want it. I want to see something different for you. I want you to get involved in the Word of God. Come to Bible study. If you don't want to come to Bible study, do something. Get a book. Go to one of the bookstores. Get a Bible study book. Do something. But just show God that you actively and consciously and constructively want to make this year different from all the other years. I don't want you to leave the stress in your life and your mind. I want you to walk the stress in your life. Put your hand in front of you. You're your bunny jumping. Not me. I don't want you to do that. <laughs> I want you to go parasailing, I want you to go skydiving. You can do all this stuff. You can do anything you want. But it starts with you. I need you to understand that when you cross over at the threshold of 2019, you've got to have a purpose driven mindset. It's a beautiful book that I keep on reading. It's called A Purpose Driven Life by Rick Warren. Get that book. This will be your start to your new year. Get this book and you'll understand what you need to do in the new year to live a purpose driven life. Don't let one day go past when you use it in the same old, same old. Every day must be purpose driven. And if you don't find your purpose in life, I don't know what's actually said. People not finding their purpose or finding their purpose is not fulfilling. Both are very sad. I found my purpose in life. What I'm doing here today is my purpose. God has given me a certain skill set. The ability to stand and speak to you today, inspired by the Word of God. He's given me a personality profile which fits me in the past. And he's given me his Holy Spirit, the passion, enthusiasm. So what I'm doing here today is fulfilling my purpose while I'm on this planet. How many of you know why you are on this planet? Some of us don't. We think, well, what am I here for? Find your purpose. Search God and his word and his word to reveal his purpose to you. If you don't come to me, I can help you find it. It's not that different. It's not like rocket science. You can't get help to find out why you're on this planet. And once you understand your purpose, you'll live every day purpose to live. And you know what the key to find and fulfilling your purposes? I'm going to close with this. This is up there, for me the gem of everything. And it's not about you, it's about what you do to others. Once you find your purpose, <coughs> you will fulfill it by blessing other people. And once you do that, the penny drops. The light bulb goes on you and say, oh, this is what I'm doing. Your purpose is not for selfish gain. It's not for you. It's for you to bless others. You gotta step back at the end of each day and look and say, how many people have I inspired to? How many people have I helped? How many people have I been beneficial to? How many people have I had a positive impact on? If you're doing things during the day, spending hours and hours doing something that is not beneficial to you or anybody else, I beg you for the love of God to stop doing it. Because you're wasting everything. Do you understand that? If you are doing something, and you collect stamps, if you do, no offense, but if you collect stamps and you're spending four hours a day putting the stamps on the page and packing that on the bookshelf, stop doing it because you're wasting your time and wasting everybody's time. That's not beneficial to you. That's not beneficial to anybody else. Imagine if you spend four hours of your life doing something that can help and inspire young people, old people, visit out there to or something. Go just do something that can help other people. Are you with me? Are you on the same page with me? I see some of you, the lights are flicking. Some of you are thinking, hell no. Well, that's cool. If you think hell no, then you don't have to fulfill your purpose. Be selfish and end this life. Let 2019 be like the last 10 years of your life. But I want 2019 to be different for you. I want you to wake up every day thinking, right? And say, purpose driven, purpose driven. What am I going to do today that's going to impact myself positively? Then I can impact other people positively. When you leave this life, I want you to look back. And so what have I left behind? I don't want you just to be two days in a tombstone. Year lies. It's just a waste. When I tell my people, they say, wow, that guy really inspired me. He led me to Christ. There was a time when I was really down and out and he helped me get this. I remember him because of this. That's what we should be. Leaving a legacy behind. Leave a footprint on the earth. Some silence. Hope you thinking about it. When you leave this church, next week we cross over with something different. 2019 is upon you. 
They did not be the same as all the other years. They did be a breakthrough year. 20 years from now, I want to look back and say, 2019 was my breakthrough year. When I gave up those bad habits, when I, got, when I read the Bible like five times, when I read the Bible study, when I help people, when I witness for the, the kingdom's calls. And as you go over to 2019, God's instructions are actually very, very simple. He says, follow me. He says, have faith in my word, not your word. Stop that. When you leave this, the one who raised up the window, there's no back. You'll never cross the Jordan in your own strength and resources. God says, follow me. Follow me in faith. And live out your purpose while I've created you. And I will even declare to do that if you apply this mindset to your life. Not only will you rise to a whole new level of the God needs you to be, but you will become everything that God created you in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Amen.